G'day, this is Richard from Wickerworks, and in this video I'm going to show you how to repair and reweave a wicker chair. Okay, this is the chair in question. Um, it's a metal frame chair uh, with um, natural wicker uh, woven through it. Um, you can see the damaged area here, but what, for this video I'm going to sort of do from there all the way to around about here. You can't actually see in the video, but a lot of this wicker is pretty dry and brittle. You can see it's just snapping. So um, because this is the most vulnerable vulnerable spot being the seat, we're gonna replace all that area there. What we're gonna need for the job, naturally some wicker. Three millimeter is the size being used. Tools, a hammer and a screwdriver, you'll see in the video what I use that for. Water bottle, naturally keep the wicker moist. Uh, a little preem here, which helps to, to, to feed in new wicker and a pair of pinches, stainer knife, and these are my vital tools, good good pair of secateurs or cutters, scissors, and um, let's get cracking, or shall I say weaving. Okay, first of all, we need to put a couple of strands in here, one on this side, this is for doing the joins eventually, and another one at the other end, which you might be able to see just here, but I've wedged it in. And uh, to start weaving, I've decided to start Right up this end here, it's just easier to put a little widget in there and then I'll just start weaving. Hope I don't flick the cane over, it's a bit awkward, but and just carefully start weaving here. I do just do one at a time so you get the image. Just be careful you don't. So you can see that and just pull my fingers in here. And we go all the way to the end. I'm just doing one at a time. You can go over two or three if you want to, but just for the purpose of the video, it's just easier to do it this way. Every time I pull my fingers in through here to pull that fairly tight, snug to the other wicker. And just help the sister cane, the reed going through these strands. And now, Underneath the pole, as you can see, fairly tight. Um, there's a metal bar that goes underneath here. So what I'm going to do in this one here, I'm going to pinch the cane just about here. And then what that will do, I'll make a crease and it will go underneath back this way, as you can see. And then we continue on weaving the opposite direction. So I'm wrapping around this pole, um, fairly tight, goes over a couple of times, like that, and underneath. And you just want to make sure that there's enough cane, as you can see here, to go all the way to the very end, because that's where you're going to do the join. Um, that's what these canes are for on the end here, because once you come to the very end I'll show you you twist the, the reed around and you can continue on that means every join is on the poles and not anywhere else the alternative method is to when you run short if, you, if you're short say here you weave the can leave it underneath there and you can put another cane adjacent to that which I'll show you in a minute and you can continue on except that you'd be left with all these little um, nodes underneath that could be sharp if you want a seamless chair, then I would weave all the way to the end. Okay, come to the end here. It's a bit of an awkward spot because of that metal bar here. But as you can see, this piece of cane is wedged in here. That's going to be the join. I'll fold that over and hold on to this piece here. And just carefully, with a bit of assistance, bring it over the pole. And go over again. and pull it fairly tight into that area. As you can see, use my fingers here to keep that pressure on. That stays there. And then I continue on by weaving underneath here. And another way you can see, okay, but eventually that would be the join and we can continue on and to the end and back again. Okay, here's the method if you're uh, kind of running out of 
of reed and you want to just join it underneath here. So I leave a little piece hanging down there, put the new piece in like that, doing it one handed because I'm holding the camera and you just continue on. And all we need to do at the end is just cut these little pieces off underneath at about 45 degrees and um, you're kind of uh, pretty well done. If I just show you what I do here, those ones there, let's cut that one off there and that one there and that's your join. And if you look underneath, that's what you'd be left with. So um, if you want to avoid that, um, especially on backs of chairs, then uh, I continue on and as I said before, do the joins on the sides and then you get a seamless uh, bit of material. Of course, if you're just going to patch up, you've got no option but to use this method. It's quite okay. Okay, um, as I mentioned before, we use a screwdriver or some metal and flat here with a hammer. And this is so that after half a dozen rows or so, you just gently tap this. So you um, tighten the weave up, otherwise you'll find it will, will be sort of bowed. And the other thing is, which I'll show you in a minute, once I bring this one, this weave right across, you actually, can you zoom in here? I'll go over one strand instead of two one wrap instead of two because that way you try and keep a nice straight edge on the wicker. I'll show you that in a minute. I would say coming to the end here, and instead of going over two, normally every uh, five to six rows, you just go over once and um, like that. And do the same the other end. And that way you won't get the, 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 the wicker sort of coming out at one side and creating a sort of a concave shape. Uh, here's a bit of a close up showing the joins again, just in case you got a little bit lost in translation, but uh, it's the best way I can show you. And you, leave, you need to keep adding these new strands by feeding in, them in through. As you can see, I've already got one up this end ready to go. Make sure you wedge that in and then You've probably come up to around right about where my nail is and then um, you need to use this one again so just prior to you coming to the end you just need to add another one of these long strands and that way uh, you keep the process going now i was going to teach you or show you another option of doing some joins so i'm going to just freeze the camera here and uh, show you another way of doing the joins okay now i'm going to show you that other method of doing joins if you get your new bit of reed and you cut at about 45 degrees across there like that and then you where the where this piece ends you just bring it underneath and you join it through there it's a bit awkward my hands are in the way but you kind of push that into that little slot as far as you can go and then with your little pinches just pinch off the end, just so you get a nice crease. And then assist it like that. And then you're all ready to go, continue on, and you find that be a nice little tight join there. It's never gonna come undone. And that, the bottom bit underneath here, this bit here, you just cut off at an angle. And that's it. And then continue on. Okay, you can see that there's a broken piece here, a uh, piece missing. So I've um, done a bit of weaving up to there. So to lock a new piece in, a bit of leftover wicker, I'd cut there, if you can zoom into that bit there, just to get a nice clean cut, so you won't see it. Push that bit out, and with your new piece, feed it through. And it's a little bit wet wicker, so it's hard to push through, but once you've got that in there, whoop, <laughs> like that that's it and you can continue on and then of course at the end here you just cut off where it's out of view so at the moment I've got that in line with that piece of wicker there so you really don't see the join and then we can continue on rather than um, going through like this one strand at a time and then the next one and then pull it because if you do that you'll end up getting straights 
a real straight type piece you won't get that nice oval shape and the other thing is good chance that when you come near the end to pull it really tight it's it's gonna buckle and twist and you're forever trying to untwist it so be a little bit patient and just do one strand at a time like i've done here you get that nice shape now and if you go over through the next one and pull it you're not getting any twists and the cane will be nice and tight don't forget like I've done here, I've only gone over one strand. I think it's about, around about eight. We go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine or so before I um, do a single strand, otherwise they're all double. Um, you have to work that out yourself. The best way, as long as you keep this distance the same to there, because if you don't do this little piece here, what will happen, and you continuously do a double weave, you'll end up having um, come right to the end here and you'll have a gap here which is probably no problem you can weave that in but it's not the right way of doing it so i'm going to continue on finishing all this and i'll get to the hard bit which is the last inch or so because um it's just a little bit more time consuming and then um, we're pretty well finished and then i'll show you what i'm going to do with the top just to do that strand there and uh that's it Okay, you can see that uh, little piece I put in earlier, which was broken. Um, just cut that off and weave over the top of it and it's all but disappeared. And um, so we're not far off of finishing this uh, seat. The awkward bit is yet to come. That's a narrow bit around about there. Okay, I'm coming to the end where it's a little bit um, tight to weave like this. I mean, if you're comfortable to continue on doing it this way, go ahead. But what I normally do is I um, turn the chair on the side like that and um, it's easier to weave uh, one strand at a time bring it over to the other side you can see and just pull it through work your way all the way to the top here or to the right side and then reverse it until you keep going it, it just means that you get a nice tight weave um, as I said before each their own if you prefer to continue on the way as normally then go for it um, that's your choice and don't forget all the time to keep whoops, keep tapping the return uh, sorry the um the wicker closer here to the to tighten up the pattern here and don't forget as you can see here uh, to spread that little uh, area where you do just two laps or uh, one lap around rather than two you can see there's one there and another one at the end here and um, just a couple down here so as you can see i'm getting close i'll um continue on weaving and finish it off and finishing off incidentally just try and sort of wherever it works out but try and make sure that uh you probably end up with a little piece down towards the end and stick it up through here or taper it off just so that the wicket doesn't uh, unravel okay i'm coming to the end the last row and if you notice here where the screwdriver is it kind of parries marries up with that one there so it's on you need another gap here near the one in there so to do that, as you notice, I can use the screwdriver before and just tap these up a little bit, make them a bit tighter. And you can see if you go all along there, you'll end up gaining that extra bit here. And I'll do the likewise down this end and you'll find you've got to feed a whole new one in and it should match up quite well, probably in just about here. So you can see it uh, by shifting all the wicker down a little bit, just a couple of mil here and there, and the last one goes in, and uh, that uh, is the seat repaired. Obviously, I've got a light once it's dried out, lightly sand over, and a little bit of stain, maybe just to colour it up. Now let's concentrate on this top bit. Now, as you can see, whoops. There should be a locking weave in there, which um, is normally just three strands, and I'll show you how we do that. Okay, this last bit here, um, one long piece of uh, wicker to carry the both ends, and one shorter bit. Um, pinch that little bit in there, just so that you can get a nice crease. This strand goes over one. If I can call it up, that strand. I'm doing it one hand because my my operator, the camera has gone to get me a glass of wine, which is uh, very nice of her. And this one comes up behind it. So 
so you can see that. Okay, so then we've got the second one is filtered there. And what you do is the next, this next one, the second strand, come over and go over two. So in other words, that one and that one there and come through there. Pass it through. And don't forget, I'm doing this with one hand, so it's easier when you've got two behind it again to bring it out here. And now you can see that weave starting to take shape. This one again, just put it in through there. Yep. It came out. I should do this again really properly, but I think you can see the gist of it. See, that's how you're getting that nice fold. And just keep going along until you come to the end. It's quite easy just to finish off. And that's your um, locking weave in place. Also, if you, uh, I'm not going to show you this on the video, but to make a new one, but if you were to have this whole thing redone, the, the object is when you come to almost level before that bend of the metal frame starts taking that shape, you discard going any more across left to right and coming up because you find you're going to have a, a really awkward shape around there. So you stop doing this weave. Normally I'd do it around about here, stop weaving up to about here. And then I start connecting these pieces to that top rail. So as you can see though, that they've got three strands, only one is effectively goes underneath there and is tapered off and cut. So when you start weaving this round bit through there, the, the binder bit, same material of course, you need to do all this back piece first before you finish off say comfortably around about that much wicker and then you find you get a nice tight join. If you don't do that way, if you kind of wrap it around that, around that metal pole there and keep going around with the wicker, it just won't work. It will look horrible. So I hope that makes sense. Um, if I can find another chair um, with that sort of process, I'll make another video, but I think that's about it. There we go. All finished. And then of course, last but not least, we just need to cut these, trim these off. And then you find it's uh, all done. Okay, there we have it. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned a few tips and tricks. So uh, there we go. Cheers.